we have learned how to route to pages with the file-based routing system. While that is already powerful, Expert Router can do even more. It lets you create API routes. Unlike page routes, which render UI components, API routes let us build RESTful endpoints with complete control over the responses. Think of it like building a Node plus Express app. You can perform all your CRUD operations with the database. But here's the cool part. There is no need to set up and configure a separate server. Expert Router gives you everything right out of the box. API routes are great when making external API requests as well. For example, if you're building a universal app that needs to talk to third-party services, API routes are perfect for that. Since they run server-side, your sensitive info like private keys stays secure and never reaches the browser. Let's see this in action with some examples. Yet again, I have a new Bearbones Expo Router project called API Routes App. The commands are npx create expo app at latest api routes app navigate into the project folder and run the command npm run reset project to reset the project to have just index and layout files in the app folder all right first up we need to configure our project for server output so open your app.json file and update the web sections output property to server now let's create our first API route. In the app directory, create a new file called hello plus api.ts. Just like page routes, API routes must live in the app folder and must be named filename plus api.ts. This is the convention we must follow. From this file, we will export a function that matches the get HTTP verb. So export async function get. And yes, the function name matching the HTTP verb is also another convention. The function body, we will keep it simple with a JSON response. So return response.json message hello world. That's it. We have our first API route. We are using the standard response object to handle our incoming request. We return a JSON response with simple object. Start the app with npx, expose start, and head to the browser. Navigate to localhost 8081 slash hello without the API part, and you will see our JSON response. Message, hello world. Just like that, we've got our first API route up and running with Expo Router. And this really is the core idea of API routes. In the app directory, create a plus api.ts file and export functions named after HTTP verbs. In this case, when someone makes a GET request to slash hello, our GET handler jumps into action. If this makes sense, let's dive deeper and learn how to handle CRUD operations with API routes. We will use Thunder Client, a REST API client for VS Code to test our API routes. If you haven't already, please go ahead and install the Thunder Client extension for VS Code. Now to keep things focused on API routes, we will skip setting up a database. Instead, we will store our data in memory, which means it will be cleared when we reload the app. And that is perfectly fine, since our main goal is to understand how API routes work. So let's start by creating some data to work with. Create a new folder called data outside the app directory. Inside this folder, create a file called comments.ts and export an array of three comments. Think of these as comments on a YouTube video, each with a unique ID and some text. Now that we have our data ready, let's create our API routes. In the app directory, create a new folder called API. Now this is not a convention, but it's good to keep your API routes organized. Inside this folder, create another folder called comments and add a new file, index, plus api.ts. And this is within the comments folder. We will start by importing our comments from the data file. So import comments from data slash comments. You can also use at for absolute pathing. Next, we export a function called get. This get handler will simply return our comments array as a JSON response. So return response.json comments. Let's now test this handler. 
open Thunder client, click on new request, and make sure the HTTP method is set to get. Enter the URL HTTP localhost port 8081 slash API slash comments. When you click send, you should see a status 200 OK response with our array of three comments. Perfect. The get handler is working as expected. While we are using Thunder client for testing, in a real application, your UI would make this request either when the page loads or when a user interacts with it. The important thing is that we have successfully created an API route in Explorer. Now that we have get requests down, let's handle post requests to create new comments. In Thunder client, we'll create a new request. First, select post as the HTTP verb and update the URL to HTTP localhost 8081 slash API slash comments. Next, we need to specify a new comment object. So head over to the body tab and under JSON, we will specify text in quotes. And the value is new comment. And we are not specifying an ID because that will be generated by our API route. When we click send, we get a status 405 method not allowed. Let's fix this by adding a handler for the post request. Going back to index plus api.ts file in the comments API folder, we will define and export a new function. Export async function post. Each API route function gets the standard web request object as a parameter. So specify request of type request. We extract the JSON body from the request by calling and awaiting request.json. We will destructure the text property, this right here. Then we create a new comment object. So const new comment is equal to id. We will set it to the current length of the comments array plus one. So comments dot length plus one. And then we set the text property equal to the text extracted from the request body. Since key and value are the same, we can use the shorthand notation. In the next line, we will add this new comment to our comments array using the push method. So comments dot push new comment. For the response, we return response dot JSON, but this would give a 200 status code. Since we are creating a new resource with our post request, a 201 status is more appropriate. So we will specify an object status set to 201. In Thunder Client, when we hit send now, we get a 201 created status and our new comment as the response with an ID of four. In a real app, this would have created a new record in our database. Now let's tackle patch and delete requests, which work a bit differently since they require specifying which comment to update or delete. While our slash comments index plus API route handles get and post requests, patch and delete requests need an endpoint like slash comments slash ID, where ID is a dynamic segment. So first, let's create a dynamic API route that returns a single comment based on its ID. Inside the comments folder, create a new file called within square brackets, ID plus API dot TS. We will once again import the comments array at the top. We will define a get handler function. Now you should know that the handler function accepts two parameters, a request object, which we won't be using, hence the underscore, and then an object containing the route parameters. The object gives us access to params which contains any dynamic segments from the URL. We will destructure ID, which is the folder name. So ID, this is of type record string comma string. Using the ID route parameter, we will find the comment in the array. So const comment is equal to comments.find such that comment.id is equal to parse int id, which is the route parameter. If the comment is not found, we return response.json with an object header comment not found and status 404. If it is found, we return response.json 
the found comment. Pretty straightforward. Let's test this in Thunder Client. In the tab where we are making the GET request, let's append slash one to the URL and hit send. We get a 200 OK status and the comment with ID equal to one. Try slash two. We get back the second comment. So now that we understand how to define dynamic API routes, let's handle patch requests for updating individual comments. The code is pretty much JavaScript at this point, so I will paste the code and explain it. We export a function named patch, and this is a convention. It takes two parameters, the request object and an object containing the route parameters. In the handler, we first get the JSON body from the request and pull out the text property. To find the comment we want to update, we use the find method and pass in a callback function that checks if the comment ID matches the ID route parameter. If the comment is not found, we return a 404 error. Otherwise, we update the comment's text property and return the updated comment as a JSON response. In Thunder Client, we will start by changing the HTTP verb to patch. We will keep the same URL since we are updating the comment with ID equal to two. In the body under the JSON section though, we will add text updated comment. When we hit send, we get status 200 okay. The comment with ID two by the text is now updated comment. Finally, let's handle delete requests. Once again, I will paste the code and then explain it. You can find all this code in my GitHub repo. So the function is named delete, and this is once again a convention. It takes the same two parameters, request object and an object containing the route parameters. In the handler, we find the comment. If it is not found, we return status 404. And if it is found, we splice the comment from the array and then return a message that the comment has been deleted. If you wish to, you can also return the deleted comment. In Thunder Client, we'll change the HTTP verb from patch to delete. The URL structure remains the same since we will need the comment ID. For this example, we will delete the comment with ID two. We can remove the body JSON since it is not needed for delete requests. When we hit send, we get status 200 okay and a message common deleted. So this is pretty much how we handle CRUD operations in Expo Router API routes. In summary, Expo Router allows us to create RESTful APIs with ease. We can define API routes using the plus API.ts file convention and exporting functions named after HTTP verbs. The functions receive a request object as well as a route parameters object. We can handle get, post, patch, and delete, among other verbs. And we can also handle dynamic routes by using square brackets ID plus API.ts file convention. You have to make sure web output is set to server in your app.json file. All right, with that, we conclude this course on Expo Router. We've covered file-based routing, dynamic routes, catch-all segments, customizing not found pages, about layouts, route groups, navigation, patterns like stack navigation, tab navigation, drawer navigation, modals, platform specific code, and finally, API routes. I hope you have a much better understanding of the concepts now than you did before starting this course. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, take care.